Pat skulks away with a wave of Irik's hand, gathering things from his hovel. Disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure your bodyguard steps forward. My bodyguard? Oh, the Warhawk. Uh, are we done here? Gunnolf, were you wearing green back at the hall? No, just bought him while you were walking around. Why? You look like a frog. <laughs> How can I not choose that one? <laughs> Better than an eggplant. That, that's fair, that's fair. What's up guys, I'm Jay Zinski. welcome to the channel, and welcome to the first episode in my series on the Banner Saga. This game came out in about 2014, it was re-released in 2016 for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and I'm just now getting to it, I'm just a few years behind, just about six years behind, but I'm really excited to play this game. It is a tactical based strategy slash RPG kind of game with a very heavy basis on like Viking folklore and stuff and it just has a beautiful art style I mean just look at that it's so very intricate and it's just it's just beautiful just look at all these unique characters which I'm sure we're gonna get to meet and love and according to the description of the game their characters will die based on our decisions our choices matter a lot and I just I just love that and there's I've already played a little bit. There's a lot of story to it, so I'm just really excited to get in. So we're just going to go in and start a new game. The story in the Banner Saga changes based on the choices you make. You'll occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. It sounds cool. <laughs> the gods are dead. Uh, in their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving back black destroyers called... Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Dredge. Okay. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. Which is a really interesting, like, you know, way to start off your game or your story or anything. The sun has stopped. This game is made by Stoic Studios, by the way. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, the largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. I think these Varl guys are these Some of the guys. men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. How big they are compared to just normal people. Massive. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. This must be Strand. Look at them, they're so tiny compared to the Varl. Look, oh, that looks so cool. These horned giant dudes. straight into the combat, I think. Yeah, it's already, it's just pulling you in already into the world. Love it. I don't know what he's saying, but he doesn't, he doesn't sound happy. Ryan just in time, the chieftain in red, yeah, and his men are now looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. Drag around the screen to see your surroundings, to click the check mark to continue. Yep, simple enough. The order initiative is down here, taking turns from left to right. Your allies are blue. And the enemy is red. Very easy to understand. It's my turn to act. The shield banger goes first. Next. 
Movement happens before action. This ring shows your shield banger is active. Yes. Shows where you can move. He feels about four tiles. The horned allies are a race of giants called Varl. Fucking massive dudes. While humans fill a single tile, this can have a huge impact on your strategy. Click the tile you want to move to and then move the check mark to confirm. Move your shield banger here to get him into attack range. Target enemy, click the tile on which they stand. Target this enemy now by clicking his tile. Break his armor. The number beneath each icon, 2 5, show the damage you will do to that stat. Strength counts as both health and damage. A loss of 2 strength means you'll now do 2 less damage. If strength falls to 0, the character falls in battle. So it's kind of like if you start losing health, it's just a road downwards, really. Armor blocks strength damage but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open up to take more damage in the future. Five strength, strength attack will kill him. Kill. Check the first. Check the fist now to attack his strength and confirm my choice. Yes. Yeah, I get wrecked. Oh, he just did the shield bang. Now I know his way. He's called that. He's down each time you make a kill. Your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. So, okay, so renown is the experience. Taking an action, your ten ends. Next up is the enemy. Turns always alternate, even if you're outnumbered. The chieftain with yellow hair, but his hair's red. Why is it like that? I I won't, I won't, uh, I won't question it. Yeah, he's shieldbringer has really high armor. I'm guessing. Tink. Now it's my warhawk's turn. He's beyond of range. Of these enemies, but all characters. Can use willpower to boost their actions. Willpower is a limited resource, so use it wisely. Gold tiles. A character can move further than usual at the cost of one willpower per gold twat. Per, per gold tile. Pulsing tiles beneath your enemy show how close you'll have to be to get in range. Oh, okay. So, oh, I see now. Yeah. So if I get in here and these blinking, that means I'm in range for melee. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, let's get in there. And this must be the willpower. Yeah. Uh, he has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Click your Warhawk's tile to access his ability. Uh, yeah. And we click the purple one. Tempest. Uh, the Warhawk's Tempest allows him to slam multiple enemies at once. Select an enemy and then confirm my choice. So I guess everyone in these purple tiles would take damage from this. So let's go. Oh, dang. They had no choice. Pillage! Uh, that made quick work of the Chieftain's bodyguards when there is only one enemy left. Players enter pillage mode. During pillage, each character moves in order and there are no more guaranteed turns. Mm, no. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Your allies now get to move twice in a row. Wow. Character does not move on his turn. He can regress to gain one re willpower. Okay. He's going to rest. Uh, that's not a great choice. Chieftain is in some trouble. Yeah, you could say that again. He won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost your damage. Click the Chieftain's tile to attack. Okay, I will. Click the fist and the stars above the fist to add willpower. Tink! The number of stars available each turn determined by your exertion stat. Okay, so yeah, then in that, that ticks up. Are determined by your exertion stat is the amount of willpower you can use on any given action. Oh, okay. So that's how they keep you from using too much. You'll see the damage number go up as you add willpower. You click a star and then go to your check. Yeah, kill him! Yeah! That'll teach you to mess with the governor and our horny giants. <laughs> and there goes our renown. Tink, 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 tink. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? Is that cool? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. Sounds a lot like him. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more dreads to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. 
This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade. Quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wool doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. He's mad. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Oh, this is what happened on the way up. They must have just killed all the governor's men on the way up there. Chapter 1. Only the sun has stopped. And here we are in the main menu. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Eric, steward of Strand. I manage the governor's business. Ubin, is it? Uh, it is. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. Mm, it seems a bit chaotic around here, Eric. It's been worse. I've got a lot of irons in the fire. What does he want exactly? Scaffolds that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. Alright. Teaming up with Eric. Or Eric, or however it would be pronounced. There is an extra I in there. Click the market tent to visit the merchant. I think this little thing here is cool just to show you where it is rather than just some, like, generic nameplate. This, like, has some style and effort put into it. Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as you approach. Had, I'm not in the mood today. For, for what? Talking to an idiot. The scaffolding chieftain bled out about an hour ago, Had. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. We'll say nothing. I think he's got this handled. Eirik overturns his flimsy table, scattering Had's assortment of junk across the ground. Gods, Eirik, laying it on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scafflings? Nobleman, but by East Wall. But that was months ago, last I know. Had skulks away with a wave of Eirik's hand, gathering things from his hovel. Disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure your bodyguard steps forward. My bodyguard? Oh, the Warhawk. Uh... Are we done here? Gunnolf, were you wearing green back at the hall? No, just bought them while you were walking around. Why? You look like a frog. <laughs> How can I not choose that one? <laughs> Better than an eggplant. That, that's fair, that's fair. Gunnolf goes off to look at more stalls. I like Gunnolf. Eirik, that man of yours seemed unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he used to be scaffolding. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman is in Mead Hall? Best I can tell. The name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these skulls on the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. Uh, shouldn't we have an approach of some sort? What a luxury. Come on, you've already mopped up worse today. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. The Mead House. Nobleman. Varl. I'm sure we'll figure out... Yeah, there's our renown. Dave's supplies. Great morale. Well, we did just kick some ass, so... Uh, let's go into the Mead Hall, then. Oh. You arrive in front of what must be Nobleman. A few minutes later, Irek appears with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out, Eric says over his shoulder. Ready? You're walking through the front door? They ran to a mead house, says Valgard. I'll be surprised if they can stand up straight right now. Okay, here we go. Valgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. Uh, that'll cost a bit. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of a table, his axe drawn. 
Wide-eyed, drunken scufflings scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins in the process. Battle! Oh, this is a bit bigger of a battle here. And we're just standing here in the corner watching it all. So there are... Ooh, how many of them are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Whew! That's what I'm, I wonder if there's a difficulty setting for this game. It didn't give me one when we started. Uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Shieldbanger over here because there's the most guys over here, and I'll team up Iric with him. And Valgar, how much armor does Valgar have? He has more armor than Shieldbanger. Well, then him and Gunolf will team up. All right, let's go. I was hoping for more of a fight than this. Look at them, it's gonna be butchery. Alrighty, um... Get on up there, Valgard. Stonewall. Blocks damage to strength and armor for one round. Uh, how often can he do that? I guess we'll find out. Oh, here they come. The Thug Swordsman. Iric. um... Who's this guy? Is it this man? Okay, yeah, he's not gonna go after him, so. I want you to get on up there, Irek. Going in with your big ass cloak. Uh, let's just end your turn. Ooh, resisted, nice. And I don't think we'll be able to get an attack from there, but... Go ahead and end your turn there, Shieldbanger. Now oh, they're going after Irik. And now we'll bring in old... Buddy boy, he can't do anything this turn, so we'll end his turn as well. Oh, then they're going right for Irik. Can I move with a- okay, yeah, there's no attack of opportunity in this game, that's good. Oh, uh, yeah, plus five damage there. I want to do as much damage as I can to this guy, he's really hurting, Irik. Yeah! Oh, they're getting some kind of buff, because they all have shields, I guess. That guy will die soon, so... Whew! Irik is not going to do a lot of damage to him. Well, let's bring down that armor then. Yeah, what a hit. Whoa, he just did some like spinny or he just charged right through shield banger. Well, I guess we should hit this guy then. Go ahead and hit him shield. Oh yeah, that's what you get for showing us your back. Of course I'm gonna move him. Strikes adjacent enemies in a spin attack. Well, it's not going to hit... Is it going to hit Valgard? It says adjacent enemies, so I'm going to assume it won't. It did. It did. Alright. Learned my lesson. I should finish off that guy. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go finish off this guy. Raid Master. I don't know what that did. Oh, Irik is taking a beating. Well, that guy just moved through and just changed his targets. Well, let, let's finish him off then. Warden. Um, let's go ahead and... Choices, choices. I want to finish off this guy. He's going to be a danger if we don't ruin him. Ooh, now you messed up. Whack! Yeah, they're going after Shieldbanger. 
Um, how much would I hit him for? Not that much. So. Can I change my mind? Yes, I just have to press escape. Okay. Let's move over here so we can whack this guy. Yeah! All his health down to the ground. Dang it, they just... Ah! Eirik! Yeah, get rid of that armor. Eirik! Oh, okay, thank goodness. Oh, man. That scared the bejesus out of me. This guy's almost dead. I think they're gonna end up killing Eirik. Just started playing the game and I've already got one of my people killed. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, I gotta move. Okay. Man, I, mean, I can't. Ah, oh, man. I feel really bad that we got him killed. Ah. Uh. Poor Eirik. Oh, they're achievements. Okay. I get it now. Because there's specific classes. Oh, he's only injured. Okay. He wasn't killed. But that was the consequences of that battle. Woo, look at all that renown. And there they are. Gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. Eirik is looking out the hall's windows onto the bay fleet of longships approached with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well, Wagner. Next for Varl Kingship last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guests. See what I deal with all day long? Ah, things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying, everything's fine here, when the royal guests arrived. Not me, the governor. I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favor? What is it? If you happen to stall our guests down the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. Eirik and Valgar hustle from the meat house. To his credit, Eirik tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. Oh, that's nice. You give an apologetic shrug, sorry, and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. Oh, there's the ships. Bold reds and blues, like they said. We have no choices, so I guess we're gonna go down to the docks. Wagner. Familiar Val steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim? I think it's Grofheim. Abundant in purpose. Gods, Uben, you're looking ancient! Comes with being old. And if there is Wagner, there must be Hakon. Must there... Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old Yawks. Uh, what's... I guess not. Uh, I guess we'll figure out what Yawks is. At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Your under demands it. I think that must be the king. That probably... That's why... Yeah, that's gotta be... Probably gotta be the king. Who else will be demanding the money? I'll take over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. Just returned from Arborang, in fact. And glut for it. Hakon mo motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering. Golden Wolf head a blazing dawn red. The king of men, or someone on his behalf. The king's whelp. The king's son, Luden. Don't you know, Scrivener? We visit his capital, he visits ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Hakon has it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hakon. Then you're going to Grofheim? I have the distinct feeling I finished my business and Strand was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should! Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but... Ah, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. 
What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. Where is Moger? Hack on. Have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few. Others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Moger. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. The young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the world the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. <laughs> the young, long road back to Grofheim should be more interesting than most years, you think. Well, yeah, we're good to, we're gonna meet this Ludin fella. Weariness suddenly settles in, you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could f find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Wagner's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon. Or introduce to this yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. Go get a drink or talk to Ludin. Uh, let's go talk to Ludin. We already met Hakon. Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Val, who must be working for Ludin. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Ludin. Ooh. Ooh. I hear that music? That's pretty cool. Yes. You're with Wagner? I don't remember you. He looks like a total ass. I can already see it in his eyes. He, he does not care who I am or that I'm here. Not exactly. I've known Wagner a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grofheim with my guards. Ludin looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tithes to the capital. We crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? Uh, I hope to learn more about you. Oh, well, you seem to know who I am. Do you have what I need? What you need? So I do. I won't keep you. You leave wordlessly. It seemed clear that Ludin was in no mood to talk. Or he's a miserable cur. Or both! He could totally be both. Like I said, he had the eyes of someone who did not care that I was there. Ooh, we can still go drink with Hakon. Heck yeah. Scrivener! You find Hakon in a meat house surrounded by other Val. Strand is no longer no stranger to Val, but rarely sees this many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for a flagon. Vogner is the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise, but this time. When I got here, the great hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. <laughs> Humans. I guess if only I lived as long as a yaks fought, I might be desperate to make something of myself too. It's not too late to start trying, Hakon. <laughs> Hakon lets slip a low chuckle. Any Varl could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a sway through dredge at Vognir's side in the Second War, and regularly since then. Oh, okay, so, like, Hakon must be some big, big shot next to Vognir. Down here I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get back to Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the mead house becomes overbearing, and step back into the cool air outside. I imagine it'd be pretty cool outside. Ooh, and now we go to the Great Hall. Ooh. Is this all Strand? Like, all of this? It's pretty cool. Whee! I'm just kidding, I won't do that too much. <laughs> Alright, to the Great Hall. Oh, we lost the supply. At dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with the sun that never moves. Yeah, that... That would be real. Yeah, I wouldn't even know how to sleep. I, I that would be sucky. I like to sleep in the dark. The governor's crest adorns the supply leathers, all there just as you promised. To your mild surprise, you wonder if Ira had anything to do with that. Plus twenty renown. Hey, your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Wagner is already here. A while later, Ludin and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. Moger steps forward, Wagner's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. He looks pretty gruff. We're ready. You follow Moger and join the others. 
Usually the smaller doors sent to the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under their breath that are best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated, tired people. It summarizes Strand well as a whole, you think? Ooh. Da -da 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 -da. The drum. Oh, look, there we are. So I guess there must be like some kind of like travel mechanic because there's days of supplies here and it's oh it's recording how long like day by day as we travel minus six oh we lose supplies as like travel happens and we apparently lose morale too well i guess if you're traveling for a long time for days on end you wouldn't be very happy either oh the caravan stops for the day our gift, says Moger, cracking open Mead's casks. From our gracious friend, the governor of Strand. Hours pass with raucous laughter as the Mead is passed throughout camp. Um, I think I should stay... Well, I mean, we got, like, pretty strong dudes to handle things, so I think I'll drink a lot. It's not often you get the chance to relax on the road. The odds of something happening to the treasure cart is low, especially in this company. So you take advantage. Morale improved! You rise groggily, the campsite a casualty of merriment. Moger is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Ludin stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up, you nudge Wagner. You're needed. Ah, oh, it's Ludin. Always a pleasure. You look well rested. Wagner releases a caged yawn and receives a hard-eyed stare in return. How long to Grufheim? <laughs> We're only two days out of Strand, you know. Come, I'll show you on a map. Oh, are we going... Are we Are we all going to the map? Are we all getting a... Ooh! Look at that! That is a cool-ass map. This is a map of the world. You can explore it by dragging the mouse to plan and pan and using the mouse wheel to zoom. Location of your caravan is indicated by Ubin's icon. Yep, there's all Ubin. Many locations hold much so you can explore the map at any time for more information. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Wow, like, I can interact with everything here. Let's see what they have to say about Strand. As close as anything comes to a bastion of racial tolerance, both men and Varl compete to scratch at a living in this, the biggest trade city along the west coast. Many people still believe the god of Dangler still watches over it, granting a good fortune. So this strand is the biggest trade city on the western coast. Wow. Let's talk about Arboring. From humble beginnings to the eventual seat of power for the king, Arboring is the most populated and contested city throughout the human lands. Its towering obsidian walls have been pulled from the depths by the weaving power of the Menders. Magic, I guess? As each new generation of residents builds another ring of walls, the city continues to grow larger, more indulgent, and more dangerous. Uh, okay, that seems pretty interesting. Oh, we can even, like, learn about the road? Oh, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. We need to... Let's learn about Grofheim. Where are we going? The last home of the Varl and seat of their power. Founded by Arnfinir, the second Varl king. Arnfinir? Arnfinir, second Varl king. Though the Varl have moved around a lot, most consider Grofheim their capital. The deeds of Varl are honored here, and all warriors of worth are buried at the foot of two spears. The, the, the two spears, where they are said to become part of the Varl's march itself. I guess the Varl's march must be like their, like like, analogy or comparison to Valhalla. Alright, we're exiting out of the map. We head north, then east, past the forts. Grofheim's far from the strand. Going to be a long march. You should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Skrymirstead? To Skyrim? No, I'm just kidding. Skrymirstead. What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It stays covered in ice all year. It would tear up the longships. Too bad, though. We could have shown you all the wonders of Skrymirstead. A half-sunken city crawling with dredge, Prince. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? 
Luden exhales through the nose, a poor disguise for his contempt. He turns and bats aside the tent flaps as he goes, barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the anthill, Wagner. Seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few more days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Luden's got a shorter wick than Hakon. Thanks, Wagner. Let's get moving. Another half day at the Vetterfell if we're lucky. I saw Vetterfell on the, on the map and on the traveling. Ooh, camp. Camp is where you manage your caravan. During travel, you can enter camp at any time by tapping the camp button on the travel HUD. That seems pretty simple. While at camp or in towns, you can upgrade your allies or equip items in the hero's tent. You can pass time by using the rest tent. Resting will improve the caravan's morale. A high morale will reduce casualties in war and affect your willpower in combat. Reduce casualties in war? Is there going to be a war? Okay. Each passing day will use supplies to only rest when necessary. The training tent will allow you to safely try out any characters in a mock battle. Tap leave at the bottom of the campsite when you're ready to get back to the road. I think that's a great place to leave off for this episode. Uh, leave a comment in down below if you like to leave a like if you like this episode and subscribe if you'd like to see more i really am liking this game so far and i want to do even more episodes on it so let me know what you think and thank you guys for watching bye